Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about the settings on the brand new DJI Mavic 3. Now this is an unbelievable filmmaking tool and a photography tool as well, but unfortunately it just doesn't come set up perfectly out of the box. So if you're new to drones in general or this is your first DJI drone and you don't really know your way around the settings or the menus or maybe you have a different DJI drone not the Mavic 3 this video will apply to any DJI product so definitely stick around because we're gonna walk through all the main settings that you need to change right out of the box on any DJI drone especially the DJI Mavic 3 to make sure that you guys are getting the most cinematic footage possible out of this drone and making the most use out of this tool that you possibly can. Now, let's get into it. Okay, now let's not waste any time and let's just dive right into the settings because I want you guys to take this video and then your drone and get out flying and be amazed at how much better your footage actually looks. So we're gonna cover the photography settings before moving on to video. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna hit that little pro button in the bottom right corner of your screen on your controls page. And basically what this will do is it'll switch you over from automatic exposure controls over to manual exposure controls. Now we're gonna go in and tweak a few of these settings. The first thing that we wanna change is actually the image file or the type of image that the drone outputs whenever we take a photo. So by default, it's set at JPEG. Now, if you go ahead and tab JPEG, you're gonna see a few options that are now available to you. You're gonna have JPEG, you're gonna have RAW, and you're gonna have JPEG plus RAW. JPEG plus RAW will basically create two files on your drone every single time you take a photo, one in JPEG, one in RAW. Now, this is a personal preference, but I personally only shoot in RAW, and on the older drones, you didn't have the option to just shoot RAW, you had to do JPEG plus RAW. So this is a huge um, file saver in, in terms of how much storage is going to be taken up on your memory cards and on your drone. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and change this over to just RAW. Next up, let's talk about ISO. Now drones have rather small sensors when compared to actual cameras, meaning that if you really start bumping up the ISO, you're going to create a lot of noise in your image. Now the DJI Mavic 3 is exceptional at handling noise, but even in that scenario, I would try and keep my ISO at 100 if I can and I'm never gonna go over 400 in any situation because I don't wanna introduce any kind of grain into my image or compromise the quality. Next up, let's talk about shutter speed. Now on drones, I like to keep my shutter speed very, very high because they're obviously something that's flying in the air and like moving around and being affected by other elements than just the camera. So I would try and keep the shutter speed for my camera at around one over 1 25th of a second. Somewhere around there will ensure that you get sharp images every single time. Now the DJI Mavic 3 has the added advantage of variable aperture. So depending on what DJI drone that you're flying, this section actually might not apply to you because most of them are actually fixed at an aperture of f2.8. But the DJI Mavic 3 has variable aperture. So what aperture should you choose? Now, in most cases, I actually try and keep it at f4 on the DJI Mavic 3. I found that that's the most sharp quality out of the images that I'm getting, especially in the corners. At f2.8, the images are a little bit soft in the corners. So if you want your image to be sharp all around, I recommend that you shoot at f4. Now, obviously, if the environment that you're in is getting too dark by you bumping up your um, aperture and you're not able to lower your shutter speed to a level where your image is still sharp, then obviously it's okay for you to come down on the aperture a little bit closer to f2.8 and maybe sacrifice a little bit of that corner sharpness to ensure that you still get a good, clean image image. But most of the time, I do try and shoot at f4 on the DJI Mavic 3. And finally, before jumping into the deeper menu on the camera settings for photography, the last thing we need to cover is white balance. Now, thankfully, DJI products do an amazing job of setting white balance on their own, so I personally never touch it. And we're okay to actually leave white balance on automatic. It's one of the few settings that I leave on automatic when flying DJI drones. Next up, let's dive into the deeper settings on the camera settings for photography. So if you tap on the settings section in the top right of your control screen and click on camera, you'll arrive in this menu. Now you're going to notice some of the things that you actually adjusted previously have been reflected here, such as the type of file output that you want from your drone. Now over here, we're going to make a few adjustments. Some of them come down to personal preference, but some of 
of them I feel are really, really necessary. And that first one being is selecting your aspect ratio. Now aspect ratio for photos and I believe videos as well is set at a default of three by two. And this is what you wanna leave it at. You never wanna take a photo in 16 by nine because the drone's actually not using the full sensor size. So it's actually cropping on the top and bottom to fit it into that 16 by nine aspect ratio. So make sure you guys are always using that three by two aspect ratio whenever you're taking photos with your drone. Next thing you guys wanna do is you guys wanna turn on your histogram. Now, if you don't know how to read a histogram, don't worry about it too much. It's just a fantastic tool to let you know if your image is overexposed or not. And basically what that means is that sometimes when you're out in the sun and you're shooting and you're looking at your controller, the screen might look differently than it actually would if you were under a shade or in a less bright area. So what a histogram will help you do is help you determine if the image that you're seeing is actually properly exposed or not based on that little chart that appears. Now, if you don't know how to read it, like I said previously, that's okay. What you just need to know for now is that you want all the information to basically be somewhere in the middle of the graph and not skewed to one side or the other too much. Now, I leave the peaking settings for the DJI Mavic 3 on automatic. If you don't know what that means, then you obviously don't need to touch it, but I find that the drone does an excellent job of doing this on its own. And the last thing that I change, and this is actually a personal preference, is I turn on grid lines. Now I usually go with the tic-tac-toe and the center point grid line. And I do this to just really help me frame up my shots. I feel like I do a way better job of keeping my subject in center or framing up any kind of object or anything like that, depending on where I want it on the grid when I have these turned on. So it's just a very helpful tool for you to use in just getting better at your overall principles and your overall skills as a photographer and videographer. Now that's it for the settings that I change on the DJI Mavic 3 on the photography side. Let's flip over to video. Now the good thing about DJI drone is that if you make an adjustment on the photo side and it's applicable to the video side those settings are actually going to carry forward so that's good news for us because that means if we set up our photo settings correctly we're not going to have to do as much work when we're setting up our video settings so let's dive into those now and the first thing that you're going to want to adjust is your resolution and your frame rates now if you're not planning on slowing your footage down in post whatsoever i highly recommend that you guys shoot in the 5.1k resolution at 30 frames per second on the DJI Mavic 3. That is a setting that you're always wanting to shoot in. And trust me, the footage looks really, really good. So stick to the 5.1K at 30 frames per second. Now, if you're planning on slowing things down, it'll depend on how much you want to slow them down. If you want to slow them down to up to 40%, maybe you're willing to dial it back a little bit to 50%. If you want higher quality and you're okay to slow it down a little bit less, I would stay at 5.1K and shoot in 50 frames per second. If you wanna slow it down just a tad bit more than that, you're gonna to have to step down to 4K and change your frame rate to 60 frames per second. Now, if you want super slow motion, I highly recommend that you guys shoot in 4K at 120 frames per second on the DJI Mavic 3, which is actually one of its best selling features because there's not a lot of consumer drones, almost none actually now that I think about it that I know of anyways that can shoot in 4K at 120 frames per second. So those are your frame rate and resolution layouts depending on what kind of shot you want to get out of the DJI Mavic 3. Next up, let's talk about shutter speed. Your shutter speed will completely depend on your frame rate. And if we follow something called the 180th shutter rule, we basically want to keep our shutter speed double our frame rate. Meaning if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be one over 60th of a second. If you're shooting at 120 frames, then you want your shutter speed to be two, one two fortieth of a second. So kind of try and stick to that rule whenever you're using shutter speed, whenever you're filming video, especially when you're flying close to the ground, because what this effect creates is a natural motion blur. And you want to ensure that you have that in your videos to make sure you have the most cinematic look possible when filming video with your DJI Mavic 3 or any DJI drone. Next up, let's talk about ISO. Now, just like photos, I try and keep my ISO between 100 and 400 for videos as well to make sure that I have the least amount of noise as possible in my videos. For aperture, once again, I also try and keep it at f4 to make sure I have that overall sharp image all around. Now with these video settings, you might face the problem of overexposed images, meaning that they're way too bright. Now you have two things that you can do to correct this. You can bump up the aperture higher 
until you're at a level where the image is properly exposed. And if that doesn't work out and your image is still not properly exposed, then I highly recommend using some ND filters for the DJI Mavic 3. Now I'm going to be having a comparison video coming up for what the best ND filters are for the DJI Mavic 3. Um, Freewell has already sent me their pair. I'm just waiting on Polar Pro to send me there so I can have a really good comparison for you guys and you guys can make a very educated decision on what the best ND filters are for the DJI Mavic 3. But as for the settings, those are the ones that I will stick with for now when recording video on this drone. Now let's dive into the advanced camera settings for video. And the way to get there for video is the exact same as photos. You tap the settings icon in the top right area of your control screen, and then you click on camera, and you're gonna notice that your options this time are different because you are in the video mode as opposed to the photo mode. Now, the video settings, I would argue, are way more important than the photo settings, so it's really important that we get these right. Starting off with our file type, and it's really important that we set this to MP4 because it's gonna give us the best compatibility across the most most variety of devices allowing us to edit our DJI footage regardless of what computer and what software that we're using. Now we're going to be changing what I believe to be the most important setting on this drone and that is the color profile. We're going to be changing the color profile on video to D-Log and D-Log is DJI's flat profile that takes advantage of its 10-bit color capabilities and honestly in my opinion any drone that can do 10-bit makes it the number one reason to buy that drone because it allows you so much flexibility flexibility in post and you can basically create any kind of color, any kind of mood or any kind of scene that you need to out of your footage. Now there is a bit of a caveat with this, if you're using D-Log you need to know how to color grade or color correct in some kind of software in post like Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere. So if you don't know how to use that, um, I would try to learn because I really do believe it's worth investing the time in learning how to color grade but if you don't know for now and you just want to make do you can leave the color profile on normal but if you guys do know how to color grade definitely change it to D-Log and keep in mind whenever you change to a flat profile you also get a higher dynamic range meaning that your image is just going to have overall more detail and will look better at the end when you're done color grading it. And finally the last video setting we want to change is the codec. We want to make sure that it's set to H265. Now H265 will give you a more compressed file size without losing any quality. Now this has a bunch of advantages, one obviously being that you have smaller file sizes so they're easier to manage and you're not busy downloading and storing massive video files. So make sure you guys record an H265 because DJI has confirmed that there's no quality loss and the file size is smaller. Um, so there's only advantages all around and trust me you will not see a decline in quality whatsoever so h265 on the dji mavic 3 is totally cool to use and that's it for this video guys so hopefully this settings video really helps you out and helps you guys kickstart your journey with the dji mavic 3 or whatever drone you're flying and once you guys have your settings dialed in you're going to see your videos and your photos are actually going to start looking a lot better so as always if you guys learn something from this video definitely leave a thumbs up at the bottom smash that like button it really helps out the video a lot more than you guys realize. If you guys are into drones, photography, filmmaking, and all that stuff, then definitely subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Other than that, that's all I have for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep creating.